This was brought to my attention during E3, but unfortunately I got sidetracked by a lot of stuff that wasn't as good as this and I totally forgot about this article till recently. My cat's a bitch. Phil Spencer on the Xbox One was interviewed by David Jenkins. Uh, he's a UK journalist for tech. And anyway, the long and the short of it is there's a lot of weird stuff here. Like the biggest omission is that Phil Spencer talks about how uh, 4K is more, there's more benefits in playing in 4K than playing at 60 FPS, you know, which is ridiculous as someone who plays in 4K, for real. Um, because honest to God, let's be real between me and you, <clears throat> and I will try to read some of this article, but I'm just going to talk to you like, this is my podcast, I'm going to talk to you like a person I know and I'm speaking to. For console gamers, most of them, honest to God, because I know some personally, you know, <laughs> it's almost like when somebody goes, I know a lot of black people, but for real, console gamers, a lot of them can't tell the fucking difference between 1080 and 4K. I'm dead serious. I know someone who worked at Best Buy and you know, she worked around 1080p televisions and 4K and she used to say to me all the time, I can't tell the difference between 1080 and 4K. And also, some console gamers can't tell the difference between 60 FPS and 30. As scary as that shit is. Like, you may think I'm fucking crazy, but they've been conditioned so long to play at such a subpar frame rate that I don't think they notice. I was actually someone else. I was like, hey, because I was messing around with the R7 370 on a budget built computer, and it was running Tomb Raider pretty fucking well. Like, I think I was getting close to 60 FPS on that little piece of shit. You know, it's not a great... GPU. I mean, it's a good GPU, but you know, it's not like gonna blow your socks off. But anyway, uh, you know, I asked her and I'm like, uh, how does a Tomb Raider run on Xbox One? And it goes, oh, you know, the standard 60 FPS. I'm like, what? Really? It does 60 FPS? I didn't know that. That's cool. But then something inside of me, that part of me that's cynical of everything and says to question everything, goes, man, get your ass on the computer and Google this. So I did. And of course, Tomb Raider does not run at 60 FPS on the motherfucking Xbox One. It's at 30 at best. So once again, a console gamer that couldn't tell that they were playing at 60 or 30 FPS. But I digress. This is just the case with some console gamers. I'm sure there are other people who pick up on these subtle nuances. Well, they're not really subtle. Like, going from 30 to 60 is just totally night and day, in my personal opinion. But anyway, at one point, the interviewer hits Phil Spencer over the head by saying... How are you going to increase the appeal of the Xbox One in the UK, in Europe, as well as Japan? Because outside of the US, the Xbox brand isn't doing too super hot, no matter what crap gamer would want you to believe. Phil Spencer then moves on to saying that a lot of first party pieces like Lucky's Tale and Minecraft and 4K really show off what the console's capable of. Now you've seen Minecraft, it is not a strenuous game for any system to play in my opinion there's a lot of points where phil spencer keeps hammering home the whole 4k buzzword and world's most powerful console why because they want to keep you focused on the hype you know like uh, just do it and with nike and uh red bull gives you wings it's the same sort of marketing ploys at one point, you know, I got to say that this guy, this journalist, actually has some balls in him because he actually put Phil Spencer's nose to the grindstone, and you could tell Phil Spencer didn't quite dig it much. The interviewer even has an interesting point that I found very astute about the current situation of the gaming market. To me, that just sums up the entire situation we're in right now, where people are exchanging their love and anticipation for games for an obsession with numbers. My number is bigger than your number. My console got two pterodactyls more than yours. And yet, despite all of that, the most visually arresting game at your event was the last night. I think he meant visually interesting game was the last night. Phil Spencer goes, great game. And then the journalist says, and it looks like it could have ran on the Commodore 64, which was a pretty snipe dig. Phil Spencer has a rebuttal that I don't really feel it's not, it's, it would take me time to break it down for you, honestly, and I want to keep this as short as possible. We'll get to the meat and potatoes of this. At one point, the interviewer says, What's so frustrating to me is that the only number I do care about, the only one you and Sony don't obsess over, which is 60 frames per second, 
which I understand is easier to do on the Xbox One than any other console. Phil Spencer replies that that's correct, but, and laughs, why do you care about 60 FPS? And the interviewer then says it's the only number that affects gameplay, and yet, it's the only one you two never go on about. No one can tell the difference between 4K and 1080p and all that nonsense. Phil Spencer goes, you just broke your whole argument now. How? Phil Spencer says, you just said games could run on a Commodore 64. They would not run at 60 frames per second on a Commodore 64. Uh, the interviewer then says, Iridium did. <laughs> Phil Spencer laughs and says, I'm not disagreeing with you, but the subject to opinion. Okay, and that is the biggest point. Now, the reason why Phil Spencer is deflecting 60 frames per second is simply because the two consoles can't do it. The Jaguar CPU is limited in that factor. It really is. There's no way around it. I don't care how anyone who is a console obsessor wants to fantasize that overclocking a Jaguar CPU would make any amazing difference in terms of frames per second. It's weird how they can scream the console so amazingly powerful, but it can't hit 60 frames per second. That's because the CPU is the bottleneck. But point being, the reason why they're not saying it is because they can't deliver it in all games. You know, it's still kind of like 60 FPS is a pipe dream this generation, which makes absolutely no sense. And I guess for them to upgrade the CPU really would have been just no sense either from a monetary standpoint. They're here to make money, not make your dreams come true. And frankly, the fact that he just brushes it off, you know, he deflects as best he can, shows how there is no faith in the hardware. They want you to be locked into the idea of Oh, 4K makes me a better gamer. And if you don't believe that there are people who are sucking up this Kool-Aid, I will play you a video crack gamer saying 4K makes you a better fucking gamer. All right, I will. I'll do it. I will punish you. Uh, obviously, native 4K is going to help you become a better gamer. So I think if you're one of those gamers that wants to be a better gamer, and we all want a GG, right? Like, let's be honest. We all want a GG. And I think that native 4K allows us to do that. And why it does that is because the picture is clearer, obviously. Uh, you're going to have better performance, which is going to help you become a better gamer as well. And I think that as far as, um, you know, just, just being able to, to see things better, uh, crisper images, clearer images, uh, more pixel counts. The higher the pixel count, obviously, the, the better you're going to be able to see and react. Like, let's say you're playing a shooter game or whatever, like Call of Duty, right? and you're playing in native 4K, you're gonna be able to see things clearer that somebody that's playing, you know, at 1080p would be able to pick up on. This is how to play the game! In all seriousness now, wait till next generation. When the next console generation comes out, I guarantee to you, come back to this, mark my words, take that to the bank and chash it or whatever the fuck the catchphrase is when the new consoles hit and they have better cpus and better hardware and they can do 60 fps 1080p they're going to be touting that shit from the fucking raptors oh the new xbox 2 i guess they'll call it does 60 frames per second and 1080p and 1440p with a lock 30 fps in 4k and people will cry they will fucking treat Phil Spencer like he's the goddamn Virgin Mary when he walks out with that shit. The same goes for goddamn Sony. The second that the new generation is out and they actually have CPUs that don't choke the living cock out of the damn GPU, 60 FPS will be the next buzzword that they'll run by. 60 FPS, honestly, I would say is a bigger game changer than 4K. Why? Simply because no matter what you do, there's a certain fluidity with 60 fps there's less latency the faster your frames the less latency you get and, and if you're not fucking online match or whatever you need every edge you can get because some of these cocksuckers have laser fucking aim and if you don't believe me why do you think all those great tournaments are held on pcs dude because there's no goddamn input latency you would not see csgo playing at 40 no, 24 frames fucking per second in esports because it's fucking retarded and slow. You know what this is all about. You're in the know. You're on my channel because you have some semblance of cognitive ability. You don't need me to reiterate the simple facts of life. Phil Spencer knows that the Xbox One can't handle 60 FPS in all games, anything outside of the first party things that are like racing games or some sort of crap like, like Ori and the Blind Forest or something. Two, 
when 60 SPS becomes the industry standard next generation, Phil Spencer will walk out as cocky as fuck saying, we heard you and we gave it to you, 60 FPS, and everybody will lose their minds. Three, <coughs> fuck you, pay me. That's what I'm gonna say to the corporations when they finally start sending me my emails about how they're sorry they ignored my fantastic amazingness on YouTube. I have to go film some bad dad for the children. Well, you know the whole spiel. Can't actually get more of a shit than me. Rate, comment, subscribe, caress the like button if you so choose. If not, fuck it. I have Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, uh, whatever else I'm supposed to have that they tell me I need to have to get some respect, but they won't give it to me, guys. The, the industry keeps pissing in my Cheerios.